Many people feel isolated, disconnected from one another and the planet. The culture of competition and the scarcity it creates leaves us isolated, lacking support and collaboration. Images and stories of harm being committed in the world are painful to watch, especially when they're often caused by overzealous corporations or our own corrupt governments. A growing mass feel it's virtually hopeless to rectify our course and yet are powerless to help, largely because they aren't aware of what to do or how to get involved. Each week, Soul on Air's mission is sharing information and resources to accelerate humanity's shift into the love paradigm by giving hope, inspiring action, and manifesting change. Always asking the question, what would love do? Welcome to Soul on Air. I'm Evan Hirsch. And I'm Kip Baldwin. We believe one of the most important questions a person could ask in any situation is what would love do? So let's share some love, Kip. What have you seen love do recently? You know, Evan, um, I think one of the most powerful visions that I've had of what love is actually doing in the world was when you and I went down to uh, Glendale just recently for the uh, Kyle Cease event. Seminar, Evolving Out Loud. Evolving Out Loud, there you go. Um, And when he had us all do that group meditation, group visualization of where we saw ourselves as our 100-year-old self, and he asked people, you know, what sort of a house do you visualize yourself being in? And and he said, how many of you see yourself in a mansion? Two people out of 1,400 raised their hand. I'm like, wow, that is a remarkable sea change compared to where this was, say, 15, 20 years ago when people started talking about the laws of attraction, about where's my Bentley, where's my winning lottery tickets, you know, whatever else. And, and how many people then said, no, I see myself in a small house in the woods with less than three bedrooms surrounded by people living in Earth, all my friends and family, and living off the land and connect. Then everyone's hand went up. And it was just more and more of this idea of um, – us letting go of all of these material things that we have used to define ourselves when in truth, it's the love that defines us. It's the love for one another. It's our love for life. It's our connection to all life. At least that's how I feel. Absolutely. I think the love message is so alive and well and thriving and just becoming more and more pervasive. And I, I, I personally embrace the love message anywhere it comes. I mean, your corporation, you want to maximize your profits and you're going to use the love message, great. Get the love message out. You're helping us. We, we don't need to choose to help you with your motives. You're helping us with ours and we can do with that whatever we want. And people aren't, um, they're, they're writing the new story as we speak. We are literally, as Kyle says, evolving out loud. Well, and another thing that happened at that event, and this isn't obviously the first event where they um, talked about this, but he talked about like the stuff that we carry around for our life, like the great grandfather's World War II jacket that we move from storage space to storage space, hoping to pass on to our kids who are then going to move it from storage space to storage space. And these things become our identity. They become that thing that we're dragging around with us. And, and at least from my perspective, what is this actually saying? Well, it's actually saying that the but the ultimate thing that is a, a keeping us from being fully the potential that love can be is that reflection sometimes we see in the mirror. And it's not that having the experience of the body is bad at all. And again, you know, this is just my perspective, Evan. But it's, it's putting love before the experience of the body so that we can have a better experience of the physical. Rather than like now where we're going physical first, Love second. Let's go love first always. It sounds like a reasonable place to start anyway. <laughs> you know, if what we're trying to do is accelerate our shift into the love paradigm, yes. And, and uh, clearly that's what we mean about uh, helping the love message to proliferate. And we have some exciting and interesting guests that we're going to bring on today and talk to them about that. Their version of the love message, what they're doing out in the world to help promote it and help it grow which at the end of the day is really what this is all about. It's giving hope and inspiring people to awaken and grapple with what can I do. Each one of us asks, what can I do? Absolutely. And, and you know, so many people have been doing this so much longer than, um, like, our guests today. They've been doing this for, you know, multiple decades. And the interesting thing is, you know, while I was sharing, you know, sort of my perspective on things, 
I also recognize that we all, there's infinite other paths that we've taken to get this to this point. And all, like you said, whether you're a corporation or the individual, as long as you're bringing that love energy, if you will, into the world, or, or more specifically, like you and I have discussed a lot, it's moving away from that place of institutionalized fear where fear is our motivating factor in all the things we do. Because as, as science has shown us and repeatedly um, through many different studies, it's like there's only two things that come from reacting out of fear, and that's fight or flight. Look at the world around you. Tell me if that's not what we're doing almost all the time. Powerful. It's powerful. And when you start to look at things through that lens and examining, is this, is this fight or is this flight or is this love? And things become easier and easier to distinguish the more that we do it. Absolutely. Love, love should eventually get us to a point where living becomes much less effort less than it is, or much less effortful than it is now. Exactly. And it, and, and it just looks different and it feels different. And uh, again, not to overdo the Kyle C thing, but we were quite moved by the experience of evolving out loud with him down there. And um, we have some fun footage we're going to put up on the website pretty soon about mm -hmm. that too, some people's reactions immediately following the event. But one of his big tenets of his work is letting go of what's heavy and pursuing what feels light, what feels right, what feels like it's more driven from the heart as a calling, something that we're driven to do. Um, and I want to read really quickly one of our value tenets because these are quite valuable to us. <laughs> they're, they're fundamental to us because this is, we're, we're really doing something a little bit different at Soul, something new. And we're operating, we're establishing this foundation of what, of our, what our values are. And so one of them is measuring success by the momentum built and the number of hearts and minds opened by the effort, as well as the thriving in the wake of what they're resolving. So it's a matter of a new, you know, reevaluating the definitions of success, wealth, and progress. Absolutely. And, and one of the things we should, you know, as we're talking about fight and flight, we should talk about that that is one of the, you know, most basic elements that, that has brought us together was this idea that we're looking around the world. And even for, you know, people that someone like uh, Bernie Sanders, who we both have ultimate respect for, and was a huge part in why you're here today, you still look at him, you're like, God, he's fighting against something. Well, the, the thing is, folks, as long as you're fighting against something, you're propping that thing up. What soul is about is solutions. We're solutionists. Absolutely. And we're, we're looking for the fellow solutionaries out there who have come up with solutions of their own. And our goal is to bring those stories to our audience, to be inspired ourselves when we find them. And we'll know when we take that emotional pulse and we feel, wow, this thing is going to help accelerate humanity's shift into the love paradigm. That's the stuff we want to put on air. Because there are people out in the world, you you know them, and I guarantee you, you out there know them as well. There are so many people out there just saying, you know, screw the system, screw the establishment, and not fighting against it, but I know a better way to do something. We're sharing with you the stories that you can then take home and apply in your own communities, in your own households where applicable. Now, granted, not everything works for everyone, but we're going to share as many different voices and as many different visions of what the love, love paradigm is as we possibly can here without any judgment of right, wrong, good, evil, just what's workable towards a sustainable future for all humanity, in fact, all life on the planet. Hey, Kip and Evan, feels. sorry for the interruption. Your callers are on hold. Fantastic. Thank you, Brad. Appreciate you chiming in letting us know. Yeah, we're excited to know. We've got callers on. Hey, we've got guests. <laughs> we, we certainly do. Um, Michael, give a little run-up to our guests. Yeah, why don't, uh, Kip, I'm going to turn it to you. And since you introduced me, thank you very much, to Harold and John, why don't you give them the, the formal introduction and the pitch? Fantastic. Well, um, our first guests are two true pioneers legends, visionaries in the love movement. Um, they've been doing this since the you know mid-90s, actually. Uh, it's Harold Becker, or as I like to call him, Harold Love Becker, and, and John Lovegold of the Love Foundation, uh, who actually founded um, the global phenomenon that is Global Love Day, uh, celebrated every May 1st. Um, Harold and John, um, how did I get to know Harold and John? I know. Actually, one of our guests later in the show, Jennifer Hillman, uh, brought them to my attention and said, hey, have you checked in the Love Foundation? They'd be great guests for 
um, and, and another radio show I did a while ago, and we just hit it off immediately. I mean, hours and hours of talking about the infinite possibilities that love presents to us once once we move beyond, again, the blinders, blinders of our fear mentality. Um, and then as Evan and I began to know one another and we first started talking, I'm like, I've got to introduce you to these guys. They're going to blow your mind. And Evan, being Evan, said, you know what, I'm not just going to talk to these guys on the phone. I'm going to fly out to Florida and spend a week or three with them. <laughs> and, and this is how powerful these guys are. Yeah, so, careful. They're addicting. <laughs> oh, it's so much so. And so this is how powerful they are. Evan Hirsch, who you guys will come to know through time, is an extremely powerful, wonderful, open-hearted man who's really seeking the betterment of the planet for all of us. Um, Wow, what could he possibly have to work on? Well, after spending three weeks with John and Harold, he got back in the car with his driver taking the airport and said, you know that guy you picked up from the airport? I'm not that guy anymore. <laughs> so without further ado, we'd love to introduce uh, our friends, soul brothers, John T. Galt and Harold W. Becker. Hello, fellas. Hello there. <laughs> Hello. There they are. Welcome to Soul on Air. We are well, so happy and excited, and we thank you for being with us. And we congratulate. How's it sounding so far? Launch. Yes, it's awesome that you guys are doing this. Yeah, well, really you're a great inspiration, and we want to we want to give credit where it's due. And, and you're a great inspiration for all that Kip and I have been putting together. And, and this is one expression of it. And so, again, thanks for helping us express this love thing. <laughs> and, you know, and for people not in the audience who have never been introduced to John and Harold and the Love Foundation, why don't we just start by sharing a little bit of your own story with the audience? Because I think they're going to be bl as blown away as I was and as blown away as, as Evan has been. Well, John, I'll let you take this one. <laughs> How far back do you want us to go? Um, do you want to just know about the Love Foundation? Um, no, go back at wherever you guys want to start. You know, what what was the moment of inspiration for you starting down the path of love? A um, few tid, nice tidbits and stories along the way. And um, and then, you know, where the Love Foundation is today. Uh, we Really, I think when Harold and I met as friends and um, in a business setting, it, I think it triggered a – like a soul path and through our friendship and explorations of life, the universe and everything, um, we delved into all sorts of, you know, self-help and spirituality and um, metaphysics and a little bit of everything, just exploring the world. And it opened up our, our soul, you know, it opened up a, a whole new universe to us. And through that, um, Self-exploration came a deep desire to uh, expand that to all of humanity. And I know Harold came. Harold sat in meditation in about 1998 and got the idea for the Love Foundation. And it took a couple of years until we actually incorporated in 2000. And part of that delay was we wanted to make sure that Symbolically, we had a very strong foundation of unconditional love that we were building this vision upon. And um, a couple of years later, in 2003, we as a board uh, were considering our vision, which was to inspire people to love unconditionally. How do you inspire people to love unconditionally? And um, Again, uh, Harold, being the visionary for all of this, he woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning and said, it's Global Love Day. You know, and it was like this whole package of information. And then collectively as a board, we decided to launch it. Uh, so 2004, May 1st, uh, was our first Global Love Day, and we've done it every year since. Um, Harold, you can fill in some of the details about Global Love Day. Well, if I, if I could add one little quick thing when you're talking about Harold being a visionary, because uh, Harold's vision actually has a great deal to do with the name of soul. So initially, we were calling it Soil, Summer of Infinite Love, 
And uh, then uh, Harold came up with the idea, why didn't you call it Summer of Unconditional Love? <laughs> Never mind I wrote a book by that title. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, great idea. Yeah, anyway. we, we unconditionally love your Unconditional Love book, too, by the way, Harold. And, and we still love the Infinity Kip, so we're not <laughs> we'll call it solely. <laughs> Put an I on the end. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, so, well, Global Love Day really is and has become what we consider a celebration of our humanity. And we have basic tenets that we kind of you know, have the vision centered around. But the, the bottom line is love begins with me. You know, the, 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 the whole idea is that the love that we have within is what we give out when we give it out. Of course, that's how we get it back, but it's really the circle of life. And where so many people seek externally the understanding of love, true love, infinite love, unconditional love is already within us. So we decided, you know, Global Love Day was really a great symbol of what's possible each and every day as a humanity when we come from love, when we come from compassion, when we come from kindness, which is our natural state. I mean, really, as, as I'm sure both of you will um, carry on the, the understanding with your shows, is the, the illusion of the fear and the negativity that, yeah. you know, we become aware of once we start to move into the center part of love. So Global Love Day, one of our programs, one of 10 that we, we operate with our nonprofit, but really the one that has been the, the cornerstone to our overall vision all these years. Well, um, let me ask you a question, because uh, I know right now the the world, it, it seems there's so much turmoil, and, and God, you, I, I mean, I won't even use names for all of the people and strange things that are going on right now that might pe make people feel somewhat discouraged or somehow hopeless. But I, I know we've talked privately. Share how this has evolved and how amazing these times are compared to when you guys started the Love Foundation. Uh, if I go all the way back into the early 90s when I walked away from the business world where I had my master's degree and my banking title, my vice presidency, and I just walked away from everything, not knowing what was going to happen next, but I had an understanding that I just didn't seem to fit into the world that I was around. Taking that leap, it unfolded this overall understanding, which became the, the focus of unconditional love. And moving forward, I became more and more aware of the possibilities. And then when we launched the Love Foundation and then Global Love Day, it really did take us global. I mean, we, we didn't start as a little grassroots in our backyard neighborhood type thing. We went global when we launched Global Love Day the first year, and it brought us into contact with people, eventually what's become in countries, in over 150 countries, um, to the point where we have volunteer coordinators wow. representing 60 different countries in the United States states and, you know, 500 proclamations. I mean, it, what it made us so keenly aware of is all the good that is actually on the planet, which media doesn't reveal. It's not profitable to reveal that, I guess, is maybe the approach. But why so many of us are doing what we're doing is because there is not only hope for humanity, there is a real evolving going on with humanity and that the love is emerging despite everything we see to the contrary. And, and because I get to work with people around the world daily, uh, it just constantly reminds me just how wonderful this world actually is, not to mention how beautiful the actual earth herself is, the, the precious Gaia that we actually walk on every day. I mean, the, the earth enough, if you just step back and look at nature and all of her beauty, that would be enough chance to, you know, get us going there. But when we're actually working with our humanity and seeing the good side of humanity, there is far more good than all of the chaotic negativity that we think is out there. That's profound and so true. And if you think of in our own life, obviously our own little example, one, one person's experience is called anecdotal, but the bottom line for each of us is it's all we have is our own experience. And in our experience, how many people do we know who are just polite and decent and considerate and you know work hard and, and productive, et cetera, versus how many do we know are complete creeps and you know mean spirited and never helpful or can't hold down a job? They seem to be in the minority. I mean, just that one example of you see you experience a lot more goodness. How many decent, kind interactions do we have with other humans throughout the day, and how many are, are harsh? We you know it's 
think it, the, the media does such an effective job at sensationalizing that it does end up appearing to those who immerse in that media that things are really, quote unquote, that bad. And you're right, there's so much more to the story. Seven plus billion people on Earth, and we're hearing about a few of them. Well, to your point, Evan, we've been allowing the exception to define us, not the rule. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Love is the rule. Love is the rule. The fear is the exception. Love is the rule. Yeah. Anyway, and we're and well, and we at the Love Foundation, we have a very strong and positive vision of the future. We know where we're going as a humanity, and in spite of all of the outer and very loud evidence to the contrary. We are good. There is a heart here, and we are evolving into a a more compassionate society. Hey, John, I hate to start to cut you guys off, but we're heading into our first break. Um, could uh, tell everyone where they can find you guys and um, more about uh, find out more about the Love Foundation, Global Love Day, and and we want to say while we have time how much we love you guys and how much we appreciate you calling into our first show and how much you've meant to. What Evan and I are doing, I just can't thank you enough. Yeah, we love you very much, both of you, and and we want you to help us answer for ourselves and for our audience. If we are willing to get off the couch, drop the distractions, take action, and participate in creating this better world we all want to live in, what can we do? Well, we would suggest listening to shows like this. Put your attention on what's positive and what's right in the world. Come visit us at thelovefoundation.com. You can find us over all the social networks. And realize that you are making a difference. Each of us makes a difference right where we are. And we can turn the hardest heart into a golden heart if we bring our compassion and kindness with us everywhere we go each day. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. We'll, we'll see you Pleasure. on... Do you believe that mankind can create a world whose priority is nurturing life and that love and unity would be the foundation for this new paradigm? Soul on Air provides a unique service to our audience by personally researching solutions that align with our unique value tenets. With these stories, we seek to inspire awakening, awareness, and involvement. This is our story to write. Let's make it a love story. At Soul, we envision a new model for humanity, one that exists in a love paradigm. We believe that using imagination, shared vision, ingenuity, and technology, we can seize our spiritual awakening and accomplish growing into the world we want to create for ourselves, one whose primary motive is nurturing life. Join us as we discover and share solutions for accelerating our collective shift. Inspiring people to love unconditionally is the vision of the globally interactive nonprofit, The Love Foundation. Encouraging compassion, kindness, peace, and unity, this unique organization empowers us to celebrate our humanity by bringing us together to collaborate and develop benevolent solutions for all. Find out how you can make a difference by joining The Love Foundation right where you are. Visit the website, thelovefoundation.com, for further information. I must say a heartfelt thank you to Jennifer Hillman. She does some wonderful writing, absolutely. But with her life coaching, she was tough on me when I needed tough love. She made me dig deep and really do the work. And for every butt I threw out, she had an answer. We all know butts are blocks, and I needed to work through those, and she had the answers for it. And for those things, I'm truly grateful. If you are looking for a wonderful, intuitive life coach, it is definitely Jennifer Hellman. So when you are ready for clarity and connection with compassion, contact Jen on JenniferHillman.com. Hello, we're back on Soul on Air. I'm Evan. And I'm Kip. And we thank you for joining us. And we are about to introduce our second guest here on our debut show. She is a dear, I, I, beyond friend. She is my soul sister. She is, uh, you know, completely part of my love family um, in, in such a significant way. I, I, I could go on um, about how we came to be connected, but it's literally um, beyond this realm. Um, she was a guest on a, another show that I did, and we have since become um, connected through all space and time with her soulmate, uh, her beloved uh, Emile Jean Penn. 
um, which I, this is all part of Jamie's story. Jamie is also known as Dr. Love. She has a, actually her own show here. She's the reason we're on Dream Vision 7 is she had uh, connected to us with Deborah. But Jamie is a world-renowned author. Her latest uh, book was called uh, Love Never Dies, which is the story um, of how even when our loved ones move beyond, they're never gone from us. As uh, Jean likes to say, the veil between here and there, it's, it's so thin as to be non-existent. We're just not allowing ourselves to um, experience that. We're not opening our perception wide enough. Well, what Jamie's doing in teaching people a new way to grieve is allowing them to expand their perception so that they can reconnect with their loved ones and truly let us know that love never dies. And without any further hesitation at all, I want to welcome to Soul on Air my, my dear friend and soul sister, uh, Dr. Jamie Turndorf. <laughs> I've died and gone to heaven already from that. <laughs> That was easy. <laughs> Except I say we don't die, so I just left my body. That's all I'm going to say. Well, welcome back. <laughs> so happy to be with you guys. <laughs> well, we're so happy to, and thank you so, we're happy to have you here, and thank you so much for connecting us with Deborah. and we're just so excited to be a, a, a radio station made here on Dream Vision 7 with you. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy to have you. I know it's a perfect, perfect marriage. You hey, I could Evan say and thanks Deborah. for the hookup, Dr. Love. <laughs> I hooked you up, baby. <laughs> but, you know, that shows that dates us because when we say I hooked you up, you know, people who are younger than we are mean something else when we say that. <laughs> yeah. They, well, they're still doing the hookup. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. I, trust yeah. me, I, I've got... I've got friends. It's just all all about the hookup, I'm, and I'm, I'm I feel very fortunate that I'm actually not part of this particular generation because that doesn't really interest me. Yeah, all. we're just we're we're just hung up. You know, we've gone past <laughs> hooked up to be hung. <laughs> hung up on the love message. That's for sure. There we go. Yeah. So, um, Jamie, I gave a little bit of a preamble. Hardly does justice to the work you're doing. So. Why don't you um, tell our audience, um, you know, a little bit about your work and where this all began for you, and certainly the backstory on you and Jean and what led to you writing uh, "Love Never Dies" because it, all it, that, it huh? is just extraordinary. And I have to do this in ten minutes, huh? Oh man! All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was married for almost thirty years to the love of my life, Emile Pin. He was known as Emile Pin when he was a Jesuit and a professor at the Pontifical Gregorian University, which is the University of the Vatican. And Jean actually launched international fame when he opposed the Pope and the Catholic Church as they were trying to block the legalization of divorce. And he was a radical feminist Jesuit priest. He didn't want to see women trapped in marriages where they were being abused. So he fought the Pope and the Catholic Church, and he won and got the divorce bill passed. And soon after, he got the dispensation from the Pope so that he wasn't excommunicated and he was recruited by Vassar College to serve as the chair of the Department of Sociology. Now, from the time I was a young girl, I had a detailed premonition of the man I was going to marry. I saw his face, I saw his body, and I just said, you know what? I'm not going to date. I'm going to wait till he appears. Very medieval concept in the 70s. (laughs) And he actually did appear on the first day of my freshman year at Vassar College. And I'd been shut out of all intro sociology, and I really wanted to take social. So I asked the secretary, what can I do? And she said, go ask the department chair, Jean Pain, if he can find a seat for you in one of the closed classes. Well, the minute I stepped into his office, I had an out-of-body experience. I literally felt my soul shoot at high speed through a tunnel to the end of my life, shot back into my body, and then I got the message, he's going to be everything to you. Just remember this meeting. And then I went about my life as a college student, and in um, my senior year, we hooked up. <laughs> so he, I needed help with the statistical portion of my thesis, and I had heard that he had, among other things, been a famous statistician, having founded the Vatican's first and only social research center. So even though he wasn't my advisor, he gave me his time, and he helped me, and within a couple of weeks, we just knew we were crazy for each other. We were 
soulmates, twins separated at birth. We were just inseparable from that point on for the next nearly 30 years. And then in the last year of his bodily life, we both started having a premonition separately that he was going to leave his body due to an accident. We just didn't know when or where it was going to happen. And we go to Italy on our final vacation, and he's sitting on the beach with me, and his hand one day is up over his head as if to block the rays of the sun. And the next thing I know, a bee swoops down and stings his left hand at the exact location of Christ's stigmata. And then I watch my beloved suffocate to death in front of my eyes. And I describe in Love Never Dies how traumatized I was to have him ripped from me in this way. And I go back to the hotel room and I'm collapsed on the bed and I'm shaking and I'm trembling. I'm hysterically crying. And the next thing I know, I feel that man's hand stroke the entire length of my spine. And I sit bolt upright. I look over my shoulder. I don't see anything, but I knew he was with me. And he's been with me ever since that moment. His astonishing manifestations to this day, often in front of witnesses, prove to me we don't die, and therefore our relationships aren't meant to end with bodily death. Jean said to me, tell our story, Jamie. Let our love shine like a torch that lights the path for others. And so that is what I did. I told our story in Love Never Dies. And then I went a step further, and I developed a new grief therapy method that totally diverges from the Western approach, which is grieve, let go, and move on, and do it in six months, or else we're going to give you a psychiatric label and shove pills down your throat, which obviously the Western approach just leaves us at a greater loss. So instead, Love Never Dies shows you how to reconnect to your loved ones without a channeler, without a medium, without a psychic. I show you how to tune to what I call the spirit channel of your brain so that you can tap into our innate God-given ability to send and receive energetic communications to and from the spirit realm. And then I show you how to use my dialoguing with the departed technique for whatever purpose you require, to say goodbye to the physical body of someone who was ripped from you due to sudden accidental death or illness, to obtain guidance, and also if you are among one of the millions of people worldwide who harbors some unfinished business with someone in spirit, dialoguing with the departed, that's that amazing technique that the CEO of Hay House said, we've never seen anything like this. This technique enables you to talk back and forth and heal any unfinished business. So that's pretty much an overview. Oh, just, just that, you know, little tiny bit of work you're doing there. Not much at all. <laughs> Helping people <laughs> overcome the fear of death, the unknown. It's like it's nothing, nothing but a day's work for Dr. Jamie and John. <laughs> Well, well, Jamie, it did fly by. That was we're we're already heading towards a break. So tell people how they can get a hold of you and learn more about Love Never Dies, the grief counseling work you're doing, and anything yeah. else that you'd like to share with us. Yeah. Audience. So there's so many things. So what I'm doing now is I'm training coaches. I'm certifying them in my transdimensional grief method. Uh, I'm doing Love Never Dies live and virtual retreats, so I bring the book to life for people and actually do these four-hour retreats. You can connect with me, you know, over the Internet or attend live. I also have the Love Never Dies online course, which basically walks you through the Love Never Dies book, which you guys became number one internationally a couple of weeks ago. So there are many, many ways to bring this miracle into your own life. You can find out everything at askdrlove.com, A-S-K-D-R-Love.com. Beautiful. We thank you for that so much. And we'll be tuning in to Ask Dr. Love on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network as well ourselves. Oh, thank you. That'll be lovely. It'll be nice. Maybe you'll come back on now as a team. There you go. Well, anytime, we we would be honored. And, again, thank you so much for bringing this opportunity uh, at Dream Vision 7 and, and mostly just for sharing your jaws love with me. It's, it's, it, it matters more than I can possibly let you know. Oh, it's wonderful being with you guys, and Jean loves you so much, and so do I. I'll see you soon. Love you, Jamie. Take Bye. care. Send him much love.
Do you believe mankind can create a world culture in which the priority is nurturing life? Do you believe love and unity are the foundation of this new paradigm? Do you believe that whatever our story tells us is the reality of life anywhere on Earth? We still get to write our own life story and can choose to make it a love story? Soul, making solutions go viral. Welcome back to Soul on Air. I'm Evan. And I am Kip. And we have another guest coming up we right do. here. So why don't I let you do the honors, Kip? Who's, who are we talking to? Well, this um, is a new friend of yours, a uh, really old friend, confidant, a, another soul sister of mine. Um, Jennifer has been um, a great guide and mentor and um, Soothsayer for me. <laughs> um, we've been uh, mutual counselors to one another. But Jennifer is actually the reason I started doing radio shows. Um, in fact, they, I, I gave um, Evan a little bit of a background, Jennifer, before I introduce you here, that uh, when I was first getting ready to do my show, Jennifer and I were going to co-host a show together. And the day before we did it, her guides, her spirit guides said was, they were making her sick, they were giving her headaches, and she called me Kip. I, I, she goes, I'm not, you, this is supposed to be about you. And at first, oh, my God, I was filled with so much anxiety, I can't even tell you. I, I'm like, oh, my God, she's abandoned me. But she was right. And, you know, and this is why I love Jennifer is she just gives the most amazing wisdom and always points us in the right direction. And, in fact, she had something kind of amazing to say about this day in particular. But I'll let her tell you about that. So without further ado, the amazing, remarkable Jennifer Hillman psychic healer, soothsayer. I, I, I mean, what else can I say about her? She's amazing. Love spirit. Love spirit. Love that. Hi, oh, Jen. Well, that's, hi. Um, it is the luckiest day. Um, today is one of those rare aspects where we actually have sun conjunct Jupiter in Libra. And Libra is this wonderful sign of balance and love and values. And you guys are starting your show on this very, very special day. So it is only going to expand because Jupiter is all about expansion. So you guys have picked literally the perfect day to do such an amazing project and get it off the air, this program. So I congratulate you. I know it's going only upward and outward around the world with ease. So I thank you for letting me be a part of it. Well, we, I, we thank you for taking the time out of your Sunday afternoon to join us. And, and I couldn't imagine doing our first show without you. Um, so thank you very, very much for being here as you've always been. Um, what, um, Tell us a little bit, you know, for guests that, that don't know anything about Jennifer Hillman, tell us a little bit about Abstract Illusions and the work that you're doing and your writing and just anything else you'd like to share. Okay. Um, basically, I am an intuitive life coach. I have been doing psychic readings for uh, since 2001. It seems like way before that. Um, I knew I had abilities as a child. Um, I've always seen angels and the other side very strongly, um, but I really didn't take it seriously because <laughs> I thought everybody had these gifts till after I got divorced and realized I needed to do something. Um, and I actually talked to a psychic and she goes, why aren't you doing this? You're stronger than me. So I started doing readings, and as I was doing it, I got this repeating clients of they didn't want to take responsibility. I want the people to take responsibility for their life. So that's why I became a life coach because, yes, I use my abilities, but I use the psychic abilities only to aid me in finding their blocks. And as Kip can show you um, and tell you, the little things that they're hiding from themselves, that they need to have somebody say, hey, I'm going to be blind. Here you go. Um, 
my guides, as they did with Kip, they told me because I've been talking about starting a radio show to really support um, artists, meaning of any kind. And they gave me a name of Abstract Illusions. And I started the radio show in 2007 because they woke me up out of a meditation and said, we're so tired of you talking about it, do it already. And I called the BBS radio, and I started it two weeks later. And I was, as just like Kip, very, very nervous about starting it, but it was in my face, and I love doing it. I do take breaks every once in a while because I was doing it every week for two hours. So I've, I've changed it here and there just to spread the love, but that's a lot of what I'm doing. I am a poet. I have one book out on Amazon. and. Next week, I'm most likely I'm going to be publishing three more books. They're ready. I just need to get them out there. So I'm really well, excited I, about that. And it's about time you do because yeah. you've been talking about <laughs> Now it's my turn. I see your books going out. I see them being wildly successful. So now is the time for Jennifer Hillman to get her books out to the world. Yes, it is. And, and, and they're I, ready. I, I, it's just, it's just. I need to get them out. They're done. It's just this little nitpicky little things that I need to finish up, and I'm doing it. So there's no more excuses. Well, you know, this we we when we were talking to John and Harold, our friends from the Love Foundation, we were talking about how things, as dark as they seem right now in some aspects, let's face it, no people have never talked about love at the rate they are and as expansively as they are now. So there's so there's as much positive to look at as as well. So what do you you know if you could um, give us some sense of what do you see for the future of of humanity um, in part and and then on a more selfish level what do you see for the future of soul? Well, I've already told you, soul is going out there and it's just expanding and touching so many millions and millions of lives. I have no doubts about that. Um, wow. The interesting thing about the time now and some of the astrology that's going on right now, actually, it's the same as the 60s with, and you guys know that, obviously, it's it's been a long time. It's been like 50 years since the Summer of Love, and a lot of the astrology of that time is repeating right now. So it's like the 60s were, you know, maybe we should think about this. Now it's getting cemented. Now it's going, yes, that was a good idea. Let's take it and expand it and really hold on to it. Humanity wants a change. Humanity is tired of the darkness, and it's up to us to do it. So with programs like Soul and a lot of other things like the Love Foundation and Dr. Love and all she's doing, we're all here to make sure the word gets out. So it is well, definitely... As, as you know, part of what Soul is doing is uh, amplifying all the events for the 50th anniversary of the Summer of Love. So thank you so much for um, bringing that up because that it, this is going to be a global phenomenon and we are right in the, I, I mean, literally in the middle of it. Um, and I and I do agree with you absolutely that and that's what Evan and I talk about all the time is how we're coming back around to saying those things they started now let's bring them home and the interesting thing for me as I'm watching this unfolding is it seems like we're going backwards in time like the things that ended the 60s are happening now as we're heading back into that summer of love. And what I yeah. see is we're, we're essentially they planted the seed they started something. Yeah that still resonates today. And it's alive in many different movements and in many people's hearts. And it's from from just the things like, why can't we all just get along to, hey, peace and love, man. The the, the message doesn't, we're we're not going to let a stigma get attached to the love message. It's love for goodness sake. (laughs) And so my theory is let's take what the seeds planted in the 60s and let's take advantage of our 21st century technology now to broadcast the message much wider, as you're saying, let's reach millions and millions. In, in the Summer of Love in 1967 in San Francisco, they wrote a letter. <laughs> they posted it places and sent it around, and they wanted to spread the word, and it, it picked up a lot of momentum. Well, 
imagine the inroads that we have now to spread the word of the same message of peace and love. And even, I mean, it's letting humanity know they have a value, that everybody is equal, we're all in this together, and we're all based in love. Um, Something out really quick. I was in a head-on collision. I went to the other side, and the only thing I got on the other side is, you are loved and you are loved. Don't ever forget that. And I just, I know you guys are making sure everybody gets that message and realizes it's true. That's their truth. That's their core. And so what you guys are doing with Soul is just amazing and I knew Kip was going to do something big, and he is. He found the right person to do the radio show with Evan. I I was there to push him in to do the radio show. Evan and Kip, uh, you guys just make a great team to spread this message. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Thanks for the input, the support, the feedback, the encouragement, for recognizing that, for bringing your, your beautiful self to us. And we, we, we see that you're pure love, and we, we share our love with you as well. And um, we thank everyone for joining us today. This has been a really, really special well, let's do, event. Yeah, we've got a couple real quick. Uh, Jen, if you could tell people where to find you as we're wrapping up here, that'd be great. And then we've got to start wrapping up the show right now. I, I see the time. People can contact me on jenniferhillman.com. And I thank you guys again. Congratulations. Thank you, Jen. Love you so much. Thank you, Jen. We're just getting started here, and there's so much in store. We have so much planned. We have a lot of things we've already done, projects we've already developed, and we're putting the finishing touches on the production so we can bring them to you, our audience, and share our stories, share the insights and information and resources we learn along the way so that we can help give you hope and inspire you to come to action and participate in helping create that world that we all want to live in, in the love paradigm, where the fundamental priority for us all is nurturing life itself and asking, what would love to Yeah, Kip, I would love to. 